Okay, next topic is about how meiosis results in genetic variation. Now, I'm sure you wondered, oh, how come I look different than my sibling, even though we have the same parents, right? We inherit the genetic materials from the same two people. But how come we're so different, right? I may have red hair and my um, sister has a brown hair, right? So why is that? This is all because meiosis is such a unique process. There are some steps involved that could contribute to the genetic variation in the offspring. So this is why siblings can look very differently, even though they come from the same parents. Now, there are two contributing factors that will uh, result in genetically unique gametes. Right? And then when different gametes are united to go through fertilization, of course, the resulting individual will be very different. So the two factors are random assortment of homologous chromosomes and crossing over of homologous chromosomes during prophase one. Okay, so we're gonna talk about um, random assortment of homologous chromosomes first. Now I have a little bit kind of basics about uh, meiosis, but since we just talked about meiosis now the long ago, I don't think we need to go over that. So I'm just gonna move on to this uh, next slide. This is metaphase one, right? So in meiosis one, you still have the different steps, right? Prophase one, metaphase one, and the phase one. In metaphase one, the homologous chromosomes all paired up in the middle. So this pair of homologous chromosomes pair up. So they align right next to each other uh, in the middle of the cell. So does this pair of homologous chromosomes. Okay. All right. Now the next step is they are going to be separated, right? The two homologous chromosomes, they will end up in two different cells. So that's meiosis one, the first division. Now, when the homologous chromosomes kind of line up in the middle, they line up very randomly. In the first scenario, the two blue ones line up on one side and then the two right ones on the other side. So that's one possibility. But just remember that this lineup is completely random. So homologous chromosomes are not conscious, right? They don't have that conscious, oh, where should I go? It's just a random, you know, movement of chromosomes in the semi-liquid uh, environment of the nucleus. So that leads to different combinations, right? Different random results. If you look at the second scenario, instead of having the two blue ones on one side, two red ones on the other side, it just happens that, you know, these two homologous chromosomes, they kind of switch positions. The, the red one happens to line up on the left side and then the, the blue one on the right side. So now when you split the homologous chromosomes, you will have a one big blue and one small red in the first cell and one big red and one small blue in the other cell. So that results in different gametes, gametes number one, gamete number two. And then if we also include scenario one, two blue, that's different than everyone else, right? So that's gamete number three, gamete number four. So with just two pairs of homologous chromosomes, you have four different kinds of gametes. Like all these daughter cells at the end of meiosis, they are all different. They have a different combinations of the red and the blue chromosomes. So all four types of gametes are genetically unique. I'm going to write it here. So that's from two pairs of chromosomes. And two pairs is a four chromosomes in total, right? From two pairs, we have four I'm gonna write it here. So that's from two pairs of chromosomes and two pairs is a four chromosomes in total, right? From two pairs, we have four different gametes. Well, I was running out of space. So I started a new slide and, and I'm gonna write on this slide. So we're saying that if we have two pairs of chromosomes, which is a total of four chromosomes, that will give us two to the second, which is four unique combinations of chromosomes, which is four 
genetically unique gametes. All right, now what if you have three pairs of chromosomes? And that's a total of six chromosomes. So the calculation would be two to the third, right? So the third, um, this is the number of how many pairs of chromosomes you have. So that means it's two times two times two, right? You do it three times. And that's eight unique combinations of chromosomes, which will give you eight genetically different gametes. And then you can do the math, right? If you have a four pairs of chromosomes, you know, that's two to the fourth, and that's two by two by two by two, right? You do it four times, and so that's gonna be 16 different uh, gametes. So that number increases exponentially. Now, um, I know most of the times you just see the different combinations of chromosomes for two pairs of chromosomes, right? Everywhere you see is just two pairs. So I kind of want to um, give you a different perspective, right? Let's see what happens when you have a three pairs of chromosomes. And this will give you, uh, you know, a different number to kind of make you think how you would um, come up with eight different combinations of chromosomes. It's not very easy to find a diagram. I was going to draw, but just it would take too much time. So eventually I found this diagram from the wiki commons. Um, but there are a couple of laws with this diagram, so which I just want to point out real quick. First of all, um, this diagram has three pairs of homologous chromosomes, right? Okay. Now, among these three pairs of homologous chromosomes, it looks like they are the same, and that's not really accurate, right? Because these non-homologous chromosomes should have different sizes and different appearances, right? Um, just for simplicity, let's name, this is chromosome number one, chromosome number two, chromosome number three, right? And then for each chromosome, you have two copies. They're known as homologous chromosomes. Chromosome one, two, three should look slightly different. Okay, so that's one thing. And the other thing is, if you search for this diagram online, you will notice that this diagram has two pieces. There's a, a top half and there's the bottom half. Now, the two halves are really just repeat. Um, I don't like how you how they show like eight different cells. That's not really accurate. During meiosis one, you should have four cells, four different cells with unique combinations of um, those assort the, those random assortment, right? So if you look at number one, cell number one, three blue chromosomes on one side and then three red on the other side. So when this cell goes through, let me use a different color. So when this cell divides during meiosis one, you are going to have two different cells, right? So after meiosis one, you will have two different daughter cells, right? That's what they look like. One has all three blue chromosomes and the other one has all three red chromosomes. And then these two cells are gonna go through meiosis two, right? During meiosis two, these sister chromatids will split. So you end up with two different gametes, right? Um, over here, from the first daughter cell, you get two gametes with just the, th the three blue chromosomes. And then for the second daughter cell, you get two more daughter cells with just the red chromosomes, right? So this is gamete number one, gamete number two, right? They're genetically unique. So this cell will give you gamete number three and number four. I'm, I'm just going to draw them real quick. So hopefully you get the same thing. Each cell will give you two different gametes in the end. So eventually you have eight different gametes. So this is how uh, random assortment works. Now, we only get up to four pairs of chromosomes, right? Um, how many pairs of chromosomes do humans have? 23. And with that, this is going to make 2 to the 23rd, which is over 8 million different 
combinations of chromosomes in gametes, right? So from each parent, you are going to have a possibility of over 8 million different gametes. But keep in mind, this is from just one parent, right? So one parent, let's, uh, let's say it's 8 million, right? Which is actually a bit lower than what we actually get. So uh, the second parent, that's also 8 million. And when the two gametes combined, it's uh, what's the final possibility? 8 million times 8 million. Right? So you can see that's a pretty big number. But that's not the end of the story because this is just a uh, random assortment, right? Next, we're going to talk about crossing over. Crossing over is going to further increase the possibility of how many different gametes we're going to have. So crossing over happens in prophase one. In prophase one, homologous chromosomes will seek each other out and they will get right next to each other right before they move to the middle of the cell during metaphase. So again, prophase one, uh, homologous chromosomes pair up when they're uh, right next to each other, there could be an exchange between part of the two chromosomes. So you can see the this green arm and this purple arm could get tangled and they exchange the materials. So now instead of a completely, I'm gonna say blue, blue, you have a little bit purple. And over here, you know, you have a little bit blue. So when these two sister chromatids are split during meiosis two, that's gonna generate two different gametes, right? Because this one, instead of completely blue, it has a little bit purple. It's gonna be different than this one right here, right? The, the complete blue one. So this gives you two genetically different gametes. And then when you look at the other cell, it's the same thing, right? So previously, without crossing over, the two sister chromatids will be identical, right? They're both purple. But now with the crossing over, number three, number four, those are going to be two different sister chromatids. They're not identical anymore. So when they split again, the two um, daughter cells are going to be genetically different. Okay, so on top of random assortment, now you have crossing over, and that, again, just further increases the number of uh, different uh, cells, right? Okay, so let's uh, practice uh, with some questions. Which of the following processes normally contribute to genetic variation in gametes? Select all that apply. So since we covered those two factors, you need to identify which statements um, correctly describe those two factors. So you can actually eliminate C right away because duplication, duplication that means you copy the exact same thing, right? Well, my pen doesn't seem to work. So I'm just gonna draw with my finger. So duplication means copying, right? So that's not going to change the genetic makeup, right? Because you're just replicating everything. So you can eliminate C right away. What about D? Random orientation and alignment of homologous chromosomes. So that's about random assortment. So that's correct. A and B, okay? the only difference is um, exchange happens between two homologous chromosomes or exchange happens between two non-homologous chromosomes. So if you go back to the figure over here, crossover has to happen between two homologous chromosomes, right? They have to be the, the same type of chromosomes so that they can exchange part of the chromosome. So the correct answer is A and D. In the next part, I'm going to go over uh, Mandel's laws in, of inheritance, and we'll solve some genetic problems to practice. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.